Hello and welcome to another video. In this video we're going to take a look at the van's electrical system. So we're going to look at the uh, 240 volt and the 12 volt system as well as the solar panel and how it's all connected. Um, hopefully it'll give a better idea of how camper vans are wired up. Some are different but hey yours might be the same as mine so if you've kind of got questions this might solve a few. So let's, uh, let's take a look and see how mine's wired up. So this is my main electrical panel. I'm going to be making a huge change to this soon and we'll actually relocate this whole lot to somewhere else. But for now, this is what I currently have. So on the right, I have my 240 volt RCD protectors. So these will automatically trip if there's a short on the 240 volt system, just like the fuse board in your house. Uh, this little panel of switches is for the 12 volt circuits, such as the lights, uh, fridge and the water pump. Before we go any further, so let's see how things are connected so we understand how it all works. There's essentially two different systems going on here. So we do have a 240 volt system and a 12 volt system. So let's bring in the bongo and let's connect it up to the mains with this nice orange cable. So when this is connected, the 240 volt electric sockets become live and it also powers up a 12 volt DC transformer. Now this transformer will supply 12 volts to the 12 volt circuits, so this will be the cigarette sockets, USB outlets, fridge, water pump radio, electric blinds and the interior lights. So I also have the leisure battery which is connected to the 12 volt circuits and that 12 volt DC transformer will also um, charge up the, uh, the leisure battery as well when you're connected to the mains. So if we disconnect the uh, van from the mains, you'll see that the DC transformer stops working and the only thing that's supplying the 12 volt circuits is the leisure battery. And as you can imagine, it's going to start to drain. So on my van, I've actually got a solar panel. So this will go through a solar charge controller and supply 12 volts DC to the circuits. And not only that, it will also be charging up the leisure battery as well. So if I wanted to make my 240 volt sockets work when I'm not actually connected to the mains, you could install an inverter. So this would be connected directly to your leisure battery and it would convert the 12 volts DC into 240 volts AC. Uh, one drawback of doing this is the fact that the uh, 240 volt stuff is generally a lot higher current so it will drain your leisure battery a lot quicker. So um, I've not done it yet but it's something I might put in because every now and then you just might need to plug something in and uh, you know that's okay but I think if you were to run things constantly on the 240 volt sockets from the inverter it can drain that leisure battery really quickly. So one more thing to note here is that the leisure battery can get charged from the alternator as well. Um, you have a split charge relay in the system and it will detect if your main battery is actually full of charge. When you're driving around it will divert the current to the leisure battery and it will be able to charge up your leisure battery so that can keep it topped up as well. So now you've seen how it's all wired up. Um, yeah, I know I've got chains because it is absolutely freezing. Um, so I thought I'd best take a look at the, um, the kind of all the components in the real world uh, and then you can sort of relate to them that way as well. They all do basically the same functions. It just might be labelled up differently or in some cases maybe wired up differently, but they should be all pretty similar. So let's have a look at mine and see what all the buttons do. So this is the main sort of panel here, which is my 12 volt panel. And as you can see, I've got this funny blue thing on the front. Now this was to prevent people from accidentally pushing the buttons, which we did all the time. We'd accidentally uh, catch the fridge button or the main on off switch and just turn it all, turn it all off. So our fridge would be off for the whole journey. So this is just to prevent that. Uh, so I'm just going to remove it now so you can see what's behind this panel, which should look like uh, quite a standard panel, which you see in camper vans. So as you can see, it has seen better days. Um, <laughs> I've got bits missing, uh, things have broken on it. So let's start with the uh, switch on the left hand side because this is the main power button. Now this is a rocker switch, so it's got like two sides to it. Um, so sometimes they will wire up a leisure battery and the starter battery. So one side will um, take power from the starter battery and the other side will take power from the leisure battery. Mine is just wired up to the leisure battery, which I think is probably the most sensible thing to do because then you're not getting confused. The, the actual uh, what's written on there, it just says car and van. Makes no real sense to be honest with you. I'd prefer it to say leisure and starter or nothing at all. Just have a simple one way switch that was just the power on. That will be better for me. I'd, I'd prefer to have that but the reality is most people don't actually wire up the uh, starter battery to these switches um, some wiring might do that but it's a, I don't think it's that great practice it can get you out of trouble but really if you accidentally leave it on the starter battery you could drain that and then you won't be moving in the morning because you might have drained it completely so it's better just to use the leisure battery 
So the next switch along is the pump. It's actually got a label for the pump and this is the water pump for the sink. Um, as you can see it's missing because it's broken so I've actually moved it to somewhere else and I've fused it in a different location. The next one is the lights for the lighting circuit and the next one it says aux on it and that is for the fridge. Again it would be handy to have just the fridge label but um, I think these are again just generic panels so they just used the word aux but um, fridge would be nice wouldn't it? So that big space in the middle that used to be a voltmeter, it was like an analog one with a little needle on it and that broke and fell to pieces. So as you, as you can tell these are great quality pieces of kit. When I do actually relocate everything I'm actually going to put in a few USB sockets because they're just so much more useful and usually with those you do get a voltmeter. I am able to actually tell the uh, charge voltage on the leisure battery at the moment because I just look at the solar charge controller which actually monitors the, um, the battery voltage anyway so it's not a big issue. So the next thing to look at is the 240 volt sockets. Um, as I said in that um, the other video and the animation these become live when you plug it into the mains, uh, they go through the uh, protectors there. And then behind the panel, which you can't see, is my 12 volt DC transformer. It kind of sits behind that panel and it's just kind of above the wheel arch. And as I said before, that's what kind of powers the 12 volt circuits and can charge up the leisure battery as well. Um, so when that's off, it is just leisure battery power. But yeah, when it's all connected up to the mains, so everything comes to life and that's pretty cool. So when I'm not connected up to the mains, uh, my solar panel will actually give me a little bit of electricity if it's nice and sunny, um, but it'll also be charging up the leisure battery. These are really simple to install, so I might look at that at another time. So one really important piece of kit that I think every bongo owner should have if you have a leisure battery is a swap loom kit. Now as you can see here I've actually made my own being a cheapskate that I am and um, what this does it will swap certain circuits that normally come wired up to the uh, starter battery and swap them over to the leisure battery so you don't drain your starter battery. Things like the electric blinds and the stereo and the uh, cigarette lighters they could all be swapped over. As you can imagine that would save your starter battery from going flat because you can operate those things while you're on a campsite and um, not realize you're flattening the battery so much. So the last thing we'll look at is the batteries themselves and on the right hand side I have my leisure battery. Um, it's a pretty beefy one, I've got another episode about that leisure battery so you can go back in and have a look at that. On the left hand side I've got my starter battery and as you look deeper in there you can see that little green box. Now that is my split charge relay so that's connected to the alternator and decides whether to charge the starter or the leisure battery. It's a pretty cheap one but it does the job so I'm happy with it. Well I hope you enjoyed watching this video and I do hope it was useful. Um, I don't know if it was but um, if you do have any questions just leave them down in the comments section and I'll try and get back to you as best I can. I'm not an expert, um, I'm not an auto electrician so you've got to take everything I'm saying with a pinch of salt and <laughs> do your own research effectively but um, hopefully this kind of explains. I do have some background in electronics so you know, I've got a slight head start on this, but it's still no replacement for being a, a you know, a professional auto electrician. So, um, yeah, well, I do hope you find it useful and I will see you in the next video. Cheers.